Su Jin appears quite absent-minded and soon realizes she has left the cola at the market, so she goes back. At the door of the market, she encounters a man holding a cola. When Su Jin looks at the cash register and cannot see her own cola, she thinks this man is a freeloader and takes his cola, drinking them all. After giving the empty box back to the man, she leaves without even looking back. When she tries to pay for the bus, she realizes she left her wallet at the market and goes back again. When the cashier returns her wallet and cola, Su Jin, embarrassed and ashamed, calls the man whose cola she drank. On the next day, Su Jin and her father set out to go to the construction site together. Su Jin apologizes to her father for thinking that she tarnished their family honor. Her father assures her that he has forgotten everything and that what's important is being able to make a new start. He enters the construction site for routine checks while Su Jin waits for him in the car. The man she saw at the market the day before passes by. His name is Chol Su and he is a master carpenter working at her father's construction site. Su Jin works at a textile company that sews men's suits. The manager of the company is in trouble because a renovation project that needs to be completed has been left unfinished. Su Jin offers to help and gives the manager hope. She asks her father for help and he sends one of his employees to assist her. The person who arrives to help is Chol Su. When Su Jin sees him, she feels embarrassed about their first encounter. She wants to make it up to him by buying him a cola, but Chol Su takes the cola from her and drinks it all without saying a word. He gives her the empty box and leaves. That's how they're even. When Su Jin is waiting for a taxi after work, a pickpocket steals her bag. Chol Su watches the situation calmly from his car and prevents the thief from escaping. After fixing and handing her bag to Su Jin, they get in the car to take her home. She apologizes for drinking his cola and explains that she's been very absent-minded lately. One night, Su Jin passes by Chol Su with her single girlfriends. Chol Su doesn't even look up. Su Jin goes to Chol Su and tells him that she saw him by chance. They sit together all night and Chol Su fills a glass with alcohol. He says if she drinks it all, they can be together, but if she doesn't, they'll stay strangers forever. Su Jin drinks it all without hesitation and they kiss passionately. And so, beautiful memories begin for the couple. Chol Su's biggest hobby is baseball, and he teaches his new girlfriend how to play. Su Jin starts spending time with Chol Su in his workshop. She sees a drawing on his desk and learns that he is preparing for an architecture exam. When she tries to open a drawer, Chol Su reacts strongly and says that if she opens it, she'll find herself outside the door. Su Jin gives her boyfriend a suit she made with her own hands as a gift for his architecture exam. Chol Su tells her not to wait for him and takes the exam. He carefully completes his drawing all day long. It's now evening and he's surprised to see Su Jin still waiting for him outside. Her father realizes that Su Jin is in love with someone from her behavior and asks to meet her new boyfriend. Su Jin tells Chol Su about her father's request, but he refuses. Su Jin tries to convince him for days, but Chol Su doesn't change his mind. During dinner together, Su Jin repeats her proposal to Chol Su. However, he says that life is cruel and they won't be happy even if they get married. At that moment, Su Jin's family arrives. She had secretly invited them. Not feeling well, Su Jin goes to the bathroom. Su Jin's father asks Chol Su if he has a family and a home and says he was fired. Chol Su apologizes for everything and when he wants to leave, a scream is heard. Su Jin is lying unconscious in the rain. He immediately takes his girlfriend to the hospital. The doctor says that she fainted due to extreme stress. Meanwhile, Chol Su arrives and embraces Su Jin with great love. Seeing their intimacy, her father allows them to get married. Newlyweds spend warm and loving days together. However, there are some small problems. Su Jin keeps burning the meals because she forgets to turn off the stove. Chol Su, who has a degree in architecture, takes charge of his first project thanks to his father-in-law's connections. 
Su Jin's forgetfulness increases over time. She now frequently forgets the way to her own house. When she enters her home and sees that the kitchen furniture is different, she suspects that she has entered someone else's house. However, the changes in the furniture are just a sweet surprise from her husband. He tells her that even if he wanted to, he could no longer burn the teapots. With his new project, Chol Su has become financially stronger and has gained a higher position. His estranged mother, who has suddenly caught the scent of money, comes to ask him for a loan. However, Chol Su still harbors resentment towards his mother for choosing a wealthy man over him when he was a child. He sends her away, saying that he will never help her. But there is another reason why he doesn't want to help her. He wants to build a big love house on a large piece of land to live with his wife, whom he sees as his only family. Su Jin becomes curious about the secret of the drawer in the workshop. When she secretly opens the drawer, she sees her mother-in-law's eviction papers. Su Jin cannot ignore this situation and begins to talk to her husband about it the next day. She tells him to forgive his mother and give her the money she needs. Chol Su becomes furious and says he will never forgive his mother. He says he will never forgive his mother and will build their new house with the money he saved up by force. However, Su Jin tells him that they cannot be happy in that house while his mother is in such a difficult situation, and that forgiveness is the greatest virtue. Convinced by her words, Chol Su gives up his dream and pays off all of his mother's debts, even if it means they will be penniless. Meanwhile, Su Jin starts to feel concerned about her increasing forgetfulness and goes to see a doctor. After weeks of analysis and testing, it is determined that Su Jin has advanced Alzheimer's disease. Her mental decline will occur long before her physical death. Writing, answering the phone will become impossible. Over time, she will even be unable to recognize her loved ones. The next day, she prepares food with love for her husband to take to work and sees him off. During his lunch break, Chol Su opens the lunchbox to show off to his friends, only to be surprised to find rice in both boxes. He immediately goes to his wife's doctor. He doesn't want to believe what the doctor tells him. He becomes enraged and attacks the doctor. The nurse intervenes and tells him that the doctor's own wife died from the same disease and that he has dedicated his entire life to researching Alzheimer's. Chol Su doesn't believe that there is no cure for this disease in this day and age. The doctor tells him that Su Jin is a rare case and that her symptoms are identical to those of his own wife, and he shares his own story. He tells Chol Su that when he took his wife to the place where they first met before she died, she remembered everything and thought she had been cured of the disease. However, a few hours later, she asked him, Who are you? Why are you crying? And everything came back suddenly. Meanwhile, as Su Jin was walking outside, she suddenly fell ill and collapsed against a wall. A police officer rushes to help her. After asking if she is okay, he offers to accompany her to wherever she is going. However, Su Jin tells him that she doesn't know where she's going. At that moment, she runs into her ex-boyfriend Yong Min who left her at the train station. Unaware of everything, Yong Min takes courage from Su Jin's warm attitude and asks her if they can be lovers again. Su Jin, who still thinks they are lovers, is surprised by this question. But suddenly, Su Jin, who remembers everything, quickly walks away from there. It's nighttime and Chol Su finds his wife playing baseball. Su Jin realizes that her husband knows about her illness. She admits that she was right in thinking they couldn't be happy together after they got married, that there's a giant eraser in her mind, that love cannot exist without memories, and that soon she will forget everything. When Su Jin says she wants to leave, Chol Su tells her not to cry and promises to remember everything for her, to bring back all her memories. Su Jin says that if her memories disappear, her soul will disappear too, and she admits to being scared. Chol Su asks her to leave her soul to him and says, I am both your memory and your heart, ready for an infinite date. Together they hang pieces of paper with memories all over the house. As Chol Su leaves for work, Su Jin asks him to come home early. When Chol Su asks why, Su Jin shows him the memory-enhancing pills in her hand and jokes, Did you forget it's your mother's birthday today? 
While Su Jin is preparing dinner, there's a knock on the door. It's her ex-boyfriend, Yong Min. Su Jin welcomes him in with great joy, mistaking him for her husband who she thinks has come home. Just then, Chol Su arrives. Su Jin cannot recognize her husband, and she hides behind her ex-boyfriend in fear of her husband's hostile gaze. Chol Su tries to throw Yong Min out with great anger, and Su Jin wounds him with a knife. Chol Su takes out all his frustration on Yong Min, and at that moment, Su Jin's family arrives. When her father-in-law says that Chol Su is still very young and that he wants to take care of his daughter, Chol Su says, she is my wife, and I will do everything I can for her for the rest of my life. At that moment, Su Jin leaves the room without realizing she can't hold her pee. Taking off his shirt, he kneels down and cries while wiping his wife's feet. Oblivious to everything, poor Su Jin asks her husband what happened to his arm. After bidding farewell to the guests, Chol Su spends the whole night making a wooden miniature of the house that he and his wife had dreamed of. When he shows it to his wife in the morning, she asks him to enlarge the windows so that more sunlight can enter the house. I can change it however you want when I come back from work, says Chol Su as he heads toward the door. As he walks out, Su Jin calls out to her husband with the name of her ex-lover and says, I love you. Chol Su seems unfazed and replies, I love you too. However, a great sadness engulfs him as he steps outside. Su Jin, who has forgotten all her memories, reads through her notes and suddenly remembers everything, and begins to cry. When Chol Su returns home in the evening, he realizes that his wife is not there and finds a note on the table from her. In the note, Su Jin apologizes repeatedly, saying that her only desire was to make him happy, but that she had caused him pain and did not deserve it, that she loved him but was forgetful, and that she wanted to leave because of her forgetfulness. Chol Su, not knowing where his wife is, is in a deep void. He talks to her in his mind and says, you didn't give me another chance. I'm alone again, just like before. Chol Su notices a letter in the mailbox from Gang Nang. The letter is from his wife, Su Jin, who writes that she remembers everything today, the baseball field, the market, and everything else. And she wanted to write in case it was her last time remembering. Her last wish is for her husband not to worry about her and to meet someone nice and be happy. She tells him he has been a good husband and not to try to find her. Chol Su wastes no time and immediately goes to the nursing home where his wife is staying. They seem like strangers meeting for the first time. Su Jin asks this man who is a stranger to her why he is crying. Chol Su asks permission from the nurse and takes his wife to the store where they first met. Chol Su tries to revive their memories with great hope. Su Jin feels like she is in heaven. With a big smile on his face, Chol Su takes his wife's hand and heart tightly and takes her to the depths of love. He tells her that he loves her with great passion.